As an analyst, if you work with customer data, one of the um, piece of analysis that you will always be asked to do is do a customer segmentation. Now, essentially, a customer segmentation is just being able to group customers in, meaning, in, meaning, in a meaningful way. Okay, so if you've got some description about the customers, let's say their age, gender, their other demographic information or socioeconomic information, then you can group customers on those. You, know, you can do it manually or you can do it statistically. Now, other, other data sets and a common one in retail is RFM, recency, frequency, monetary or value, uh, depending on, on, on what, what term you use for the uh, monetary uh, aspect of it. But again, all you're looking at is customers, you know, group customers based on their recency, based on their frequency, based on their monetary. And then you sort of cross tab it. So you might have people who are high free, uh, you know, recent, you know, uh, in the last week or last month very frequent they spend more than you know they come two or three times a month um, and they spend high value and then you might have someone who's come in the last month but is low frequency and low value or low frequency high value so basically you're creating a matrix of customers based on attributes that they have okay so they're sort of the basic stuff you can then go into more advanced stuff in terms of segmentation so you might look at behavioral metrics so what time of the day they came to your website what channel they came to what channel they came via so in marketing channel if especially if it's a website um, if it's a loyalty program what campaign they use to subscribe up to you um, you may have other attributes about the customer what product they bought um, you know um, how much they spent uh, in that first transaction whatever it is okay and you may find that you have quite a few attributes that you can't do manually so you probably you want to use some kind of statistical technique like clustering uh, so k-means is a good one or even hierarchical clustering to come up with clusters of customers but essentially what you're trying to do with the customer segmentation is group people in a meaningful way how do you know how big to create those groups okay or how many groups to create now you've got a it all depends on your business but generally what i do is i create between five and eight groups. And the reason for that is because the, these segments have to be used by the marketing team to communicate with people, okay? So if they're gonna, if it's a CRM team and they're gonna send out comms, you know, creating more than eight versions of something is gonna be really hard. So you wanna try and keep it between five and eight uh, segments, that's, that, that's a manageable. But it actually, if you've got marketing automation tools where you can upload assets and then the combination of assets can be sent out automatically, then yeah, you can have 20, 30, even 100 uh, segments. But one thing you should bear in mind is that none of the segments should be uh, less than as a rule of thumb less than five percent because if you create a segment that's too small what you might find is that the creation of the assets costs more than how much money this segment makes you i mean there are exceptions for example if you work for luxury products or a, a premium brand you may find that like one percent a segment that's only one percent generates you know twenty percent of the revenue so great you you would want to create a bespoke uh, campaign for them but as a rule of thumb try not to have a segment less than five percent and on the flip side try not to have a segment greater than thirty percent otherwise you know a segment that's like fifty percent is half your base it's pretty meaningless and you may find it's quite hit and mess okay um and then you know segments can be any size in between now when you go about creating a customer segmentation it's always worth us understanding what what the business wants to do with that um, segmentation because a lot of the time what you'll find is that you can create wonderful segmentations based on the data you have available but it may not match what the customer wants to do what, what the business wants to do so you've got to always say look when the business says look I'd like, I'd like a customer segmentation you've got to understand what is it that they want to do if they want to move customers from low value um, groups to high value groups then an RFM might be uh, suitable if it's because they want to do communication based on who those people are then a socio-demographic um, segmentation might might work if they want to move people um, into more higher value cohorts then a behavioral segmentation might work and the data that you use will depend on what data you have available but the key thing is here is to ask the business what kind of segmentation they want and why they want it okay what are they going to do with it because a lot of the time you find you create lots of great segmentation and they just sit on the shelf okay um, so you've really got to ask the business what segmentation you want and why do you want it what are you going to do with it okay the other thing to bear in mind is how often do you refresh the segmentation now if it's something like socio-demographic information that's not going to change much often so you might just want to score new customers coming in and put them into a socio-demographic segmentation something like recency frequency monetary you might want to refresh every month every quarter it depends it depends how often your customers come if it's a high frequency like a, a grocer or a supermarket for example you might want to refresh every month if it's like a department store where people come once every three four months then you might want to refresh every quarter it all depends on your business um, and, and you know on your business and how it operates depending on how often you want to refresh your model and then it comes to you know things like 
when you have created your seg segmentation, okay, do you need to evolve it? Because if you've um, done an RFM, for example, and you created that segmentation, and suddenly the business is, does a really good job, the marketing team does a very good job of moving people from the low value segment to the higher value segment, you may find there's nobody left in the lower value segment. So therefore, you may want to rerun that model rather than just refresh it on the new um, customer data sets or the new customer data that you're seeing and create a new segmentation, a new RFM, and then refresh that until it's no longer applicable. And sometimes that is the case. Well, actually, a lot of the time that is the case. That a lot of segmentations that you run, the models that you run, um, they they do become um, meaningless over time because the data has changed, people change, customer behavior change. Because sometimes, like you may do a segmentation on a certain thing, like a product, and that product no longer exists. It's no longer being sold by the business, and therefore people won't uh, fall into that segment. So. So have a look at um, your segmentations once in a while and decide how often you need to refresh and how often you need to rebuild. And again, it all depends on what kind of business you have and um, what, what the business will do with those segmentations. So that's essentially what segmentation is. It's putting customers into meaningful groups uh, so that the business can do something with them, whether that's marketing or whether that's on-site recommendation. But whatever it is, the, it's the ability for the uh, business to do something uh, with those meaningful groups. Um, and that meaningful group depends on what the use case is and therefore what data you should really be using. Well, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any comments, put it in the comments section below. Uh, please do like the video and of course, please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Uh, digital analytics and one of the group of people that I get quite a few requests from are students um, and occasionally I do sort of mentor students um, 